Hey everyone, I'm Spencer and in today's video we're going to be painting up the new Mandrake models from the Kill Team Nightmare Box. The Nightmarish Mandrakes hail from Aelandracht, a shadowy region of Kimura which is home to the Drakari. The new Kill Team box comes with 10 models, although we only use 9 in our roster. We have the Leader, which is the Night Fiend, then 4 Specialists, the Dirgemoor, the Shadow Weaver, the Abyssal, and the Chooser of the Flesh. And then we have four regular warriors. All of the models except for the Shadow Weaver have these awesome sculpted flames and markings on their bodies. So one of the things that I'm going to be focusing on in this video is really making those flames and markings pop with some OSL or object source lighting. Another thing with most of them looking really similar, it means that we can really speed through these models. If you've watched a few of my recent videos, you know there's a few things that I do to help speed painting armies and units, and the first of them is to complete each stage of the process on every model before moving on to the next. Splitting the paint job down into steps helps to keep it manageable for me and also very efficient. That also means you do need to plan your steps ahead of time. So for our first step here, we're going to prime everything with IJN Deep Dark Green. This is going to be our first shadow colour and provides a base for all the rest of the colours to come. The second thing that I do to help with speed painting is that I set my desk up into three zones. I have a to-do section where the models that are ready to be worked on sit. I have a work zone, this is the space where I do the actual painting. And I have a ready for the next stage zone which is where the models sit once I've finished the current stage and are waiting for the next step. As you can see I have all the models to be done on the right hand side of my desk in the to-do section. I'm spraying them in my work zone in the middle and they get put in the ready for the next stage zone on the left. So for the next step I'm going to give all the models a Zenithal of Tamiya XF76 Grey Green. This is a solvent based paint so we need to use the Tamiya X20A thinner to thin and clean our airbrush as water or regular cleaner won't work. I thin the XF76 about 1 to 1 with thinner and use it through my gallery Mobius 0.3mm airbrush. Which is, this is my current favourite airbrush, uh, it does everything I want in miniature painting, it looks really nice too. The Tamiya paints are really smooth, so they're perfect for building up zenithals like this, and we want to do these at quite a sharp angle so we maintain a lot of that dark green in the shadows. Next up in the painting process, I'm going to give all of the skin a wash with some Griff Charger Grey, mixed about one to one with contrast medium. This is one of my favourite techniques at the moment, and it creates a really nice finish with a unifying tint across the whole of the area, from the highlights into the shadows. Mandrakes are living shadows, and able to transport their bodies through shadows across space, which they can also do in the tabletop kill team rules, which is pretty cool. The next step is the skirts, and I ran into a bit of painter's block with this. I tried a few different things, but in the end I just settled for some thinned down Saigor Brown, about one to one with contrast medium again. Still not over happy with it, but I think some of the shadows and techniques that are coming later should help to level it out. So that's two big sections of the models done. Next we're going to paint their hair, which is usually a brilliant white. Because we've already got that light zenithal on here, we can do a little cheat and we have a wash of the Norn oil all over the hair. So this is going to make the recesses really dark. And then once that's dried, we're going to highlight it up with Ortho and Grey. And we're just going to use this on some raised sections really. You could spend all day highlighting all the individual strands and painting them in, but I'm not really interested in doing that. I just want to get those key strands in there to emphasize that the hair is like a white color. There's another stage down and now we're onto the weapons. Most of the weapons actually look quite benign, so we're just going to keep it super simple. We can use a lead belcher on all of them except for the grips, which we're going to use flesh tire red. We're also going to base coat any ropes on the models with the flesh tire red too. Then we're going to wash all of these with AK Black Knight. The Mandrakes are often assassins for hire for anyone brave or stupid enough to inquire about their services. Some people even unwittingly call upon them by accident. And once a meeting is made, the Mandrakes will always demand payment, and usually it's with something esoteric or intangible. Some of the models have bits of bone on the skirts and hair, so for these I did a really th simple three stage highlight starting with Dryad Bark, then going into Bane Blade Brown, and then into AK Interactive Ivory. I started by base coating them all with Dryad Bark. Then filled in the highlight areas with Bane Blade Brown, and then just hit the very top highlights with Ivory. Something really simple. With that done, we've only really got the flame sections left, as well as those shadowy bits on the Shadow Weaver. 
We're going to be painting those with some OSL effects. So what we're going to do now is get the basing done on the models so that the lighting effects can hit those too. I'm going to keep the bases super simple here just to get through these really quickly. So I've used AK Dark Mud, given them a dip in Rivalcraft's Arid Earth, and added some liquid pigments from AK Interactive. Also make sure to get some of the pigments on the bottoms of the skirts too to sell the effect that they are in this environment. Something that I think is really important on every model. All of the models, except for the Shadow Weaver, feature some Balefire, which is a devilish flame that the Mandrakes conjure forth to burn the bodies and souls of their victims. For this, I'm going to really push the OSL on these models, so I'll be using AK Interactive fluorescent green to paint the flames. I'm using a brush at first to get the initial coat down on them, and I'm going to follow that by using an airbrush to filter on the halo around the areas where the flame would connect to the model and also where the bright green light of the flame would hit. We're then going to shade in the trailing edge of the flame and we're going to start with Achelian Green and spray this on on the very tail ends. While I'm at it, I'm also going to use the Achelian Green to create some shadows on the models on opposite sides of them to where the bale fire is, generally from a below angle. To really sell the flame effect, I'm going to very carefully use a tiny brush to apply some fluorescent yellow AK pigment to the recesses at the head of the flame where they join onto the rest of the model and also some tiny switches of fluorescent green pigment along the raised areas of the flame trails. This really makes the OSL pop and draws the eye into the models. You have to be careful when you're using this paint because you can really overdo it and you can't actually see how much you're applying when, until it dries. But when it does, it really glows. I also apply the fluorescent green to the markings on the bodies and the eyes and the mouths. Because it's an enamel product, it has a low surface tension and really easily flows into the markings on the bodies, exactly the same way the panel lining works. When it dries, it contrasts really nicely with the shadowy blue of the rest of the skin and really makes the models pop. For the Shadow Weaver, we have this big shadowy swoosh thing. And honestly, I wasn't really sure how to go about painting this. I thought I would just try some directional airbrushing with the Achillean Green, um, trying to only spray from one direction so that we can let these ridges in the shape of the model to do a lot of the work for us. Played around with that and also some Magos Purple and did the same but lower down on the shape. In the end, the Magos purple was just a bit too subtle, so I gave it a blast with some AK Night Purple ink instead. I'm not, I'm not overly happy with it, but I think um, for now it'll do. I might re revisit it later on and add some other pinks in there or purples. It's a bit of a weird thing to try and paint. Like, how are you supposed to paint a shadowy rip in space? The last thing I had to do was paint the base rooms black and the kill team was completed. All in all, these took about six or seven hours, including filming them. So for the time that it took, I'm really pleased with those results, especially with how much those flames glow. I hope you liked the video everyone if you did please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel it really helps me and you know keeps me doing what i'm doing thank you very much everyone see you next time bye